The reading for today comes from Ephesians 2. Comes from Ephesians 2. Let me decide exactly where I would like to start. Yeah, let's start in verse 1. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked. This is Paul speaking to believers. So what he's about to say applies to you and me. You were dead in trespasses and sins. He's speaking spiritually. In which you once walked. Following the course of this world. You were just like everybody else, weren't we? Following the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Anyone who follows Satan or follows the world is a son of disobedience uh, or daughter of disobedience. Anyone who follows God is a son of God or daughter of God. Among whom we all once lived. Get off your soapboxes. Get off your high horses. We too were sinners. Every single one of us walking in the way of the world, the course of the world. Every single one of us before God saved us by grace and mercy were despicable, wretched sinners in need of God's saving. It says, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. We all have lived in the passions of our flesh. We all have carried out the desires of the body and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath. That was your nature. That was my nature. And by our nature, children of wrath, like the rest of mankind, just like everybody else. But, one of the best buts in all of Scripture, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, even when we were spiritually dead, and a spiritually dead person, can a dead body do anything? No. Can a dead spirit do anything? No. So even when we were spiritually dead in our trespasses, He made us alive. He made us alive together with Christ. How did God do this? Notice that He made us, so God did it. It doesn't say, God together with Michael, or God together with you. No, He, God. God made us alive. We were dead. God made us alive. How? Through Christ. Again, how? By grace you have been saved and raised up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So not only did He save us, but He gives us this inheritance so that in the coming ages He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved. Unmerited favor. By grace you have been saved. And here's a part I think sometimes we skip over. Through faith. By grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of work so that no one may boast. Notice there that in verse 8, it's for by grace we have been saved through faith. Grace and faith are mentioned there. And this is not your own doing. Not only is grace not your own doing, your faith is not your own doing. You can't even claim that. You can't even claim your own faith. That is also a gift of God. God's grace, unmerited favor, God's faith that we need, saving faith, that is His gift to us as well. And you can't earn a gift. You, you don't earn gifts, right? You earn wages or you, you don't earn a gift. A gift is given to you and you... you there's nothing you did to, to deserve it. You're just given it. So we, we're familiar with that verse in the context of grace, but let's get familiar with that verse in the context of faith. That we're given our faith. We're given our, His grace. Both free gifts of God, not a result of works. Your salvation is not a result of works. God's grace is not a result of works. God's faith, your faith in God, not a result of of works, lest any man should boast. If we had anything to do with it whatsoever, even the smallest iota, you would have the smallest iota reason to boast. Yet, you don't. We love him because he first loved us. Right? He portions out the faith that he gives to people. This is a free gift of God. Not only his grace, but faith to believe in him too. Let's pray. 
Father, how good is it to know that we are, we who are so desperately sick with sin and who have been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and you alone, that, that you're the one who cleanses us. You're the one who converts us. You're the one who gives us faith. You're the one who shows us grace. You're the one who shows us mercy. To know that, that all these things are assured by you, are secured by you, is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It also makes us love you all the more. It makes us realize that everything that is good that is in us comes from you. Yes, we, we have our part to play, but our part to play is a secondary role. You do all this, you grant grace, you grant faith, you grant all these things, repentance, everything. And Lord, you, you do all this, and, and our job is just to trust in you, to trust in Jesus' work, to trust in your word, to trust in, put our faith and trust in you and in Christ and in your Holy Spirit and in your word. That's our job. And that as you have transformed us and genuinely save us, Lord, that then our works are not to save us, but to show that you have saved us and that that is a genuine saving, that the work that we profess is true. If we say that we are saved, our works prove that we are. Not because we saved ourselves, but as this text shows us, because you have saved us. Help us keep growing in Christ-likeness as we work towards the goal that Paul states in Philippians 1 verse 6 that you would finish the good work that you have begun in us and in through Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.